ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to speak about living conditions of seamen surviving at work on container ship. Let's go. Let's start this video with a place which became my home, my house and my flat for the next four months of contract. It's my cabin. When I took it over, it was in clean and tidy condition. My reliever has taken care of it. The carpet on deck was not new, but there were no dirty spots or strains on it. The sofa, two armchairs and a number of cabinets were not damaged or defected. All the cabinet doors were operational and in order. Also, I have a TV, but I rarely switch it on. I was even offered some candies and a new mattress, as we received the new ones in the port of my embarkation. It was much softer than the usual mattress on the ship, so I decided to accept it. The dimensions of my cabin are 17 square meters for bedroom and 30 square meters for living room. It's quite big, I can even perform some sport activities without going to the gym, which is, by the way, is also present on board. Uh, we keep there a bunch of gym equipment, the purpose of most I still do not fully understand. Now let's get back to my cabin. The dimensions of the bathroom is 1.9 width and 2.0 meters length, but this includes the space for the pipes, so actual area is smaller. It has a small mirror cabinet for storage my face washing stuff. And here is my working desk. When I arrived, there was just a telephone on it. Now I have settled my computer there and can work with all the documents and read various company circulars. In the drawers, I found lots of very useful stuff left by my reliever. Definitely, one day I will put all of them into use. For motivational purposes, I have also nice pictures on the walls. I don't know what should I feel while watching this painting. It looks amazing. By the desk I found a comfortable office chair. It has one disadvantage. When the ship is rolling, the chair is also rolling all over the cabin. But on the other hand, I can watch movies lying on the chair with my legs on desk. The kettle I never use because I can have tea or coffee on the bridge. We have a nice coffee machine there. Below the kettle there is a set of cabinets for placing various books or other unnecessary things. I personally almost have no use of them, just storing clothes of my reliever as he plans to come back on the ship one day. A special key cabinet where all of the keys from all of the doors on the ship are stored. In the corner of my cabin a vacuum cleaner is hiding. This is a vacuum cleaner for offices and the rest of the crew is using a public one stored on one of the decks. I have two telephones. One is in the living room, the other is in the bedroom. Of course I cannot call home using them, but still can call Cook to ask what we have for dinner today, can be woken up in the middle of the night to receive an invitation to check some cargo plan, or can be invited to mooring operation. But still, there are several ways how I can call home. I can use a very expensive telephone on the bridge or buy an internet card in port and call with it. Sometimes the ship has a powerful internet for the crew and you can call home anytime. Or not. As the ship is trading all over the world and its clocks are advancing to local time, the difference in time can be quite big. For example, it is evening time in the Caribbean but it is also a middle of the night in Europe, and they will not be happy to hear you. I have a small fridge for keeping my unfinished breakfast and some medicine cool. On some special occasions, I can fill it up with the tasty stuff from the bonded store, a special shop on the ship where I can buy many items from toothpaste to cigarettes. The money are deducted from the salary by captain. Now let's talk about the food on board. It is usually good and nutritious. Cook always does his best to keep the crew not starving and falling dead because of hunger. The food servings are done three times a day. They are breakfast, lunch and dinner. For breakfast we usually have a scramble egg, some tomato, cheese, uh, fried bread, 
or it can be pancakes with boiled eggs or corned beef. For lunch, we are usually having some rice uh, with meatballs, spicy meatballs and cabbage salad. Here is another lunch, uh, mashed potatoes, salad and spicy chicken. Uh, this is, I think, was dinner, and this is this is fried potato with a cabbage. Here is another dinner. There's also some fried potatoes uh, with chicken and cabbage and cabbage salad. And this is our lunch uh, with rice, onion, a piece of meat, and uh, some kind of salad which I did not eat. This is lunchtime with fish, rice, and some juice. Also, we had some soup for lunch. I do not eat it quite often. This is another lunch, some meat, buckwheat, salad, and the cake. The master of the ship's kitchen often pleases our souls with the masterpieces he produces as cakes and various delights. And this is the captain of the ship's kitchen, the cook. The dining areas on ships are called mess rooms. One is for the crew and the other is for the offices. This is an officer's mess room. And this is the mess room for the ratings. Beside of dining hour, the crew can still prepare the sandwich or two as the cook keeps the cold cuts, chocolate or peanut pasta in the fridge and the toaster is also always available. The provision is delivered in ports one or two times a month, then it is stored in the spatial store where the dry provision, meat, vegetable and fish are kept separately under controlled atmosphere. Sometimes a barbecue party can be arranged by the captain to mark some special event or just to spend a good time. You will enjoy it. Near the mess rooms, there is a recreation room for the crew. Here the crew relaxes after long days of work. It has Sony PlayStation, guitar, karaoke, chess and so on. Uh, it is a smoking room as well. I personally do not visit the room uh, quite often and prefer to stay in loneliness and sadness in my cabin because honestly I usually have enough communication during walking day. My cabin is quiet, uh, but those who live in the rear part of accommodation have quite loud ventilation noises, which are really disturbing. If the noise level seems not too high for you, I can walk outside to demonstrate its full power. We work in a very hot region. You can sweat pretty quickly just after having a small walk on deck. That's why, in order to keep our clothes clean, a vessel is equipped with a number of washing and drying machines for offices and ratings. They operate almost 24 hours a day as the crew requires clean overalls every morning. The ship is also equipped with a powerful air conditioning system, which maintains the ambient temperature in cabins at 22 degrees during the day uh, and can be even lower during the night. Uh, that's why I'm still using warm blanket while sleeping. But unfortunately, it still cannot handle with a hot temperature on my main working place, the bridge. And I have to fill up the small refrigerator there with water. This is the only way to survive on the watch. The drinking water is distributed by Captain Monthly at amount of minimum 1 liter per person a day. But this amount can be increased if the ship is working in tropical areas. It was one and a half liter on our ship. 
Despite of the fact that we're working in the tropical area, we are enjoying the beauty of Bahamas or lights of Miami only from the deeps of our cabins. It does not matter what places you visit if you have no shore leave there. But sometimes we are lucky and there is a nice opportunity to have some rest outside the port. Such days are most memorable. So finally we reached the sea. Transparent, nice blue looking sea. This is how do seamen relax. This is how we enjoy. Let's start. Hey guys, hello from the house. These recharges of eternal battery are very important for mental health. As normally you see the port like this. Like that. Or something like this. So having a day off is a good thing. But anyway, observing the beautiful sunsets or sunrises just by going for a walk on deck or out of your window is maybe one of the most enjoyable time of seamen's lives. Many people ashore just don't notice how the fantastic the nature can be. But we, seamen, observe it every day. That's it, guys. This is how the seamen live on the ship. Of course, maybe I enlightened the life a little bit more from officer's perspective, especially the cabin. Uh, but in general, all other information is describing the life of both of the ratings and officer. So don't judge me too much. Thank you and see you all in the next video.